Hey everyone, in the news this week, there have been protests at a pub in Oxfordshire which is under fire for being called The Midget after protesters said the name was offensive, but the owners pointed out that it's actually the name of the sports car, the MG Midget, which was produced nearby. As usual, it's likely just attention-seeking protesters looking for an excuse to be angry, and it's pretty much a certainty that it would be the gender equality protesters out if the car had instead been the MGB GT. There's also the United Nations Climate Change Conference, and this time it's happening in Azerbaijan, which is like holding an AA meeting down at the Weatherspoons. Some people would say that's no laughing matter, but then neither is Radio 4. And in the meantime, the whole thing will be about as boring and pointless as that Mike Tyson fight, and probably more expensive to host somehow. The Archbishop of Canterbury resigned this week after saying his position had become untenable, although I personally misheard the news at first and thought that he said untenable. Talk of which a musician from the Wallace and Gromit films was convicted this week. Apparently he was working on the wrong trousers. But anyway, it's been the aftermath of the US election, which was about as calm and sensibly discussed as you'd imagine. Highlights included the left-wing panel saying that America was apparently still too racist to elect a black president like Kamara Harris, despite obviously having elected Barack Obama 16 years ago and then re-electing him. That's how racist they were. Then the result was blamed on sexism, although Hillary Clinton actually got 3 million more votes than Trump did this time when she ran. Then minorities were blamed for being race traitors, at which point I was expecting Dora the Explorer to show up and say that the Mexican word of the day was Nacho, as in Nacho President. Then they moved on to the topic about how Trump's new cabinet has zero African people in it, although they ignore the fact that Elon Musk is from South Africa, but why let facts go in a good way of a good argument? In the meantime, the Republicans now hold the House, the Senate, the White House and the Supreme Court, which is probably quite upsetting for Democrats because if he had actually won four years ago, he'd have not had the House, wouldn't be able to get much stuff done, and in a few weeks' time he'd be leaving office. Anyway, elsewhere when it comes to heads of state, Prince William has said that when he becomes king, he's going to be royal but with a small R. Curiously enough, his uncle Andrew is also known for his preference to small R's, allegedly. <clears throat> anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe. Bye.